What do all these things have in common? A pier, like what's behind me, a jetty, boat moorings, rock walls, river banks, lakes, surf beaches. The, the answer is, no matter any time of the day, any time of the year, you will see fishermen fishing on these sort of places. Piers, rock walls, surf beaches. Yes, fishing, the land-based fishermen is massive. A lot of people use bait still and fish, like we can see behind us tonight on a beautiful night, people are fishing. We're gonna go through ways of collecting your own live bait. You can always go down to your local service station or your tackle shop, or even go to the fresh fish market and get your bait. But it's not as fresh as catching your own. When you catch your own bait, live bait, your fishing will, in, will improve a hundredfold. Nothing beats catching what's living in the water that you're literally fishing. So if you were to catch the local mullet or prawns or anything that's in that water at the same time, it's going to include improve your fishing so much you're going to just see the results are going to be amazing. And whether you're the land-based fisherman or a boat fisherman, having the best live bait possible will just benefit you so much. Well, we've, we've just come here to get some live bait. We're actually finding a live mullet right under the Westgate Bridge. You can probably hear all the traffic going above us. It's an area that's known for getting live bait. I always come to a location and identify where the mullet are. I found the mullet, so straight away I get a little bit of bread crust, dip it in tuna oil and just throw it out on the surface of the water. The mullet then congregate in. I then go and grab that bread, get the mullet trap, put the bread inside the trap and also heaps of bread crumbs then I submerge it back in the water so those mullet that are already in that area looking for that food straight away get attracted to that trap and as soon as you get one in, they all go in. One of these traps is already chock a block full. This has been in for no more than five minutes. And as you can see in the camera, it is full of mullet. There's some little ones in there, big ones, good size. Now you've just seen the potty mullet around the traps we've set. That footage was taken last week. Right now, under the Westgate Bridge, you can see in, in the background, it's a run out tide. It's very low and it's running out. So I'll put the traps down and the current's actually just flying them out. So all that footage you just saw was from last week. On the high tide, this bank here is probably in about this much water, no current, perfect for potting, and you can see all the mullet around. Now that's how we get our live bait. We'll find an area like so, shallow, where structure is, there's a pier behind us, Westgate Bridge. Obviously when the tide comes right up, there's rocks and a few reeds around where the potty mullet live. And you saw the trap that we laid. And the trap that we, we put down is this trap here. It's actually called the Reel It In Deluxe Bait Trap. It falls within bait trap regulations because of this removable top plate. In Victoria and New South Wales, you aren't allowed to have a hole any bigger than 60 mil. In Victoria, it's 50 mil. And this is 50 mil. So we put that top plate on, it's removable and it swivels, so it's easy to get your mullet out. Once your mullet are in there, it's easy to get them out. But obviously, by law and regulations, you mustn't have a hole any bigger than so. So this is a trap that we actually personally designed, and as you can see by the video, a lot of success in catching the live potty mullet in these traps. Now obviously with the potty mullet, why are we targeting them? In the Yarra, Mulloway. Uh, the Patterson River here in Victoria, Mulloway. Mulloway eat live bait. 
But when we go away to our estuaries, we go fishing in estuaries, we also get live bait for catching the big flathead. Flathead, love live bait. Up north, Barramundi, the Barra, love potty. Yes, every species loves a nice fresh potty mullet. So this is a good way of catching your live bait to come fishing. And as you can see, we're land-based. Now obviously the beauty with live baiting and getting a potty mullet is, while you're waiting for your traps to fill up and you get a couple, you can cast out your rod and start fishing. This is a great spot for Mullaway. The big drop off, the jetty here, it just drops straight off to about 15 metres. So what I do when I come out and I do a bit of land based fishing while I'm getting my potty mullet is, I've made this rod tube holder. It's only a bit of aluminium tube. I've angle grinded away to make it an angle. Dress it up like so. Just chuck it in the sand, hit it with a hammer, your rod hanging out. And while you're collecting your bait, you can also be fishing at the same time. And that's the beauty of when you're trying to get your live bait, while you're collecting it, have a fish, enjoy yourself. You may just catch that fish of a lifetime. Now we're going to look at how to pump bass nippers, which is another favourite for whiting, brim, flathead. So let's now go, we're going to go to Warneet, which is another place in Victoria, and do some live baiting there with a nice pump and pump some yabbies. Okay, we mentioned before when we're getting the live potty mullet, we're going to come down to Warneet, which we're here at, and we're going to pump some bass yabbies or nippers. We've just done one here, and that's what they, they look like there. So they're a really good bait for your whiting, your brim, or your flathead. Now obviously we're at low tide at Warneet. On high tide, all this area is covered with water, all that you can see around me. We've got the jetty here where all the boats come to. So that's what we're going to now show what we do to get these live nippers or yabbies, whatever you want to call them. Let's go. So we're at, at the water's edge. Now what we're looking for when you pump for bass yabbies or even sandworm is these little holes we see. All these little holes here is where these little creatures are living. So we just find a nice hole, like so, put our pump on, pump up squeeze it out and there's one there we can see one right there as well has come out of that hole so obviously they're a little bit small so you keep going so there's another one when she pumped out another one there so you find maybe try and find a bigger hole there's a little bit of bigger hole there pump down and there's another one there you go nice size getting a lot bigger now we see with that claw there Believe you me, that hurts when you get bitten by one of those. Nice little crunch, so, you know, this is the natural food source here for the whiting in these shallow flats. So when you're getting a natural food source, obviously you want to get the best bait possible. We can see here, see how they're digging their way back into their home here? Any hole you see, there you go. Another one. They're everywhere down here. There's another one. There's two actually, in this three. So we've got three, three out of that, that little scoop there. That's a good, good way to get them. And obviously when you're collecting live bait, remember to look at your regulations on how many you're allowed to keep. It's always important, every state has different rules and standards and fishing um, license sort of re re regulations. So just make sure you, you go and check all that out. Now we can see as we walk along this edge, there's holes there everywhere. So it's not, it doesn't take long at all to get a big a big bag of what you're after. Here we're going for obviously the bass yabbies. Find a hole, pump her out, and there's one there, just a little dude. 
not gonna, you wouldn't keep him. There's so many holes here though. They can really pick and choose the size you're after. There's another one there, which is, as we spoke about, best bait. So why would you go and buy bait when you can do this and have fun? The beauty of doing this as well, it's great for the kids. Bring your kids down. And as you saw this morning, when we were going in the potty mullet, you can also bring down your fishing rod, put your rod tube in the water, cast it out and have a fish with your live dippers while you're going for your live bait. That's a good, good pastime for a family. You go on a family holiday and you wanna get some live bait with the kids, get yourself a pump, all, all tackle shops sell them. Just remember too, once you finish with it, give it a good clean out. Being salt water, and all your parts inside, even though they're made out of stainless, things do rust and get sticky, so give it a real good clean out with salt water. Maybe put a bit of um, Inox WD-40 and really grease it up and slide it up and look after your parts. So that's how we get bass yabbies or nippers to go and catch the species you want to catch, whether it be whiting, flathead, brim, salmon, you name it. We're yet again getting things that are the mate main food source in this area which is a lot better than buying your frozen stuff and it doesn't take long to do it either so get out there and give it a crack as we mentioned it's a great the great thing to get the kids involved too when you go on those family holidays or a family fishing trip for the day get the kids to come out and get some bait too a little bit of fear they have got that big claw as we mentioned so me was a little bit scared, as get you can it off see. Now, get it off. No, you get, get it off. No, you get it off. Get it off. <laughs> you need to help me clean, clean my pump, mate. As we mentioned earlier, once you finish, give it a good clean up with fresh water. Um, sort of fill it up, squeeze it out a few times. And then when you get home, give it a good um, rinse down, like we said, with your WD-40 or something. Make sure it's got no sand in there. The sand will cut all your rubber seals, so make sure the sand's well and truly gone. Are we cleaning a good job, matey? Are you helping? There you go. Dry it up and ready for next time. Thanks, matey. So I've got young Corey with me today and we're um, going to set up a little trap here to get some shrimp, some of the live bait we like to use in the Murray. So here's a little bait trap, this is where we get the, the bait out of, dig a hole and a little bit of bait in this top hole here and we've just got a little bit of simple cat food here, a bit of yucky whiskers, so I'll just open that up a bit. How much reckon we're going to put in? A fair bit? Yeah. I'll put a bit of that in. Nice, stinky, smelly stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty yuck, isn't it? So we'll make sure we take all that rubbish away. We don't leave that around, do we? We'll zip that up. So pretty much that, that, that smell there attracts the shrimp. And uh, they climb in the side hole there and they get caught in there and then we've got a bit of bait. Hey, what do you reckon we'll put that in and see if we can get a few shrimp? Yeah. yeah, let's give it a go. So I find one of the better places to put these is sometimes in amongst the reeds is good, but I reckon the shrimp really love this timber. They seem to climb all over that timber, so I'm going to try and get her out. Just tie it off there. Be careful walking over it. So that's not a bad spot there. Nice, close to the wood. Make sure she's fully submerged. That's about it there. And find a little branch here, I'll just tie that off to that. And we'll give that, oh, maybe, maybe an hour or so, half an hour. That's nice and safe. 
and we'll see if we can get ourselves a bit of bait. The trap in the uh, water for about 30, 40 minutes, that's all you need if you get a good spot. And um, hopefully there's a few shrimp in there. Obviously fresh is the best. One of the best lot baits you can get for the, the Murray is these little shrimp that live in these reeds and near this timber. You hear a few skipping around there. Bring that back. Simple little bait trap. And this is what we're after. So, here's a few in there. These are the guys here. Get one of these out. Just, oh, oh, oh. That looks like a little prawn. Got those longer nippers there. And that's your premium bait for other well, cod take them, carp will take them, and the yellow belly. Pretty much anything that swims in this river will take one of them. And those little nippers, they like to bite you too, they don't hurt though. So that's the little shrimp we're after. We're going to go put a couple on a hook and see if we can get ourselves another fish.